And happy Halloween, everybody. Babuni here with a new brew. So I was thinking about 100 card decks. And why would you ever want to play a 100 card deck when you are, when you could just play a 50 card deck? Well, 100 card deck in type one, you get to play two copies of cards that are single brigade. So for example, you could play two copies of this guy, two copies of this guy, but you can only play one copy of multicolored cards. So like Gabriel and cards that have more than one color face value. So like John, he has three different colors at three a face value so you can't play him more than more than one copy of him so i was looking at different offenses that number one had a lot of generic heroes because you can only you can have multiple generic heroes out at the same time but you can only have one unique hero out so you can only have one ministering spirit but you can have two legion of angels out and then two res, res revealers so the idea is you're a big deck you have a lot more resources than an opponent but it's a consistency so if you can figure out a way to make your deck just as consistent as a 50 card deck then there might be some appeal and getting to run two of some powerful cards for example of having two women of thieves might be good or whatever okay so that's where my headspace was at and then i don't know what it, what inspired me but what if I, I thought like okay what if we get harvest time select a big number 100 100 lost souls from each deck and of course that's going to play all, all of our lost souls and then we play burial after that so we're going to under deck all of our lost souls so we have this 100 card deck maybe we've drawn like 20 cards so it's 80 cards now and then the bottom 14 cards of our deck are all lost souls and so that's going to give us as a slow slower dirtly kind of deck that's going to give us a big advantage assuming the opponent can't generate lost souls or shuffle our deck somehow and so something else you need to pair with this is like some sort of deck protection so if you run stables or storehouse or whatever or even this spicy creature if you have enough of these effects out and your opponent doesn't have any way to generate any lost souls then <laughs> you're effectively just locked them out of the game so that's like an interesting premise right it's an interesting way to build a control deck almost and so the deck needs to have first number way to find a way to get to harvest time and then find a way to get to burial so black has the most tools to get to burial because that's the card that's the hardest to get so number one, you can play this card, which allows you to take a evil NT card from your, your deck if you control a meek. And the Wages of Sin lets you take an evil card with the discard ability. So if you're playing a 100 card deck, you can only play one Wages, but you can play two of these. So like, I don't know if the 100 card version is going to work. Or you could block with Balaam, take a dominant from your deck, evil dominant, you can take your burial. As far as getting to the, the harvest time, you have turn one, you can attack with Messianic Messenger, or, or sorry, Resurrection Revealer. You can get Angelic Guidance to go grab Resurrection Revealer. You can uh, play Annunciation to go get out of your deck and Angel Appears to get an Angel. Victorious Being to go to Res Revealer. So like a lot of the Gospel of Christ based decks have a lot of ways to get to your good dominance. So it's like the, the, the high level idea is like, what if I paired a gospel uh, offense that can get to harvest time with evil defense that can get to burial and just like use that as a powerful way to close out the game. And so the, the sacrifice, if you do that, you have to dedicate one to two to three slots of your deck to to these dominants and dominant slots are very, very taxing. Like if, you, if you're taking, if you have like a 50 card deck and you're cutting your angel of the Lord and your glory of the Lord, putting in harvest time and burial you're like you're gonna feel that and it's gonna be a lot of a little bit harder to break through than than used to and so crowd's choice is another way to get to either one of your pieces makes it a lot more likely you'll be able to get both of these if you have this in your deck so that's like the idea so that's where i started with this kind of concept and then i said okay what if we what if we trimmed it down to 57 cards so not going down all the way to 50 but what if we went 57 and then what if we brought in like a matthew um offense so the idea is turn one you want to just do your Matthew thing. You have really a bunch of ways to get to Matthew. And Matthew's going to draw you a bunch of cards. Maybe it'll draw you into Harvest Time Burial. But on turn two, that's when you really want to pull it off. So you can either like use Spirit as a Dove to go get the last piece of the puzzle you're missing or strip it a scheme or wages. So it's like turn one, you focus on doing Matthew things. And then once you're ahead on resources, you can drop down some hand protection, deck protection. This deck is playing three sources of that. And by turn two, hopefully if things are going well, you can go to Burial Harvest time and so the, the end result is like you're playing like this really top tier offense and now you just have all this time in the world to break through your opponent your defense is like a soul hide defense has some tools to block if things are going south like on turn one getting to this guy is pretty pretty good block aside from that like you got one of thieves this 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 defense is really it's a single note defense if you're playing soul protection this defense is uh not going to be able to block super well and a lot of the good defense a lot of the good offenses out here are, are 
are running some form of soul protection, like just even like a simple Guardians from Glory or like a Builder's Spear and Joshua Dex or whatever. So this deck felt a little bit too one-dimensional to me. Be good. I was had some concerns about the defense if the burial plan went south. But I like Matthew decks. So I was like, okay, what if I try this out in a nativity deck with a different defense? So this is at 53 cards right now. Gotta cut this to the tokens. This is at 52 cards right now. So what if you took a nativity offense and then paired it with a hair defense, but it swapped out some of the dominance. And so you're cutting glory, you're cutting woes, you're cutting, what else are we cutting? And you're cutting like one of your defensive martyrs. So you're sacrificing a lot of your dominant battle winning power and putting it into this late game plan of burial plus harvest time. So the idea is like you do your typical turn one nativity things where you're trying to get to early res revealer, res revealer attacks, gets the resurrection, plays it, draws you a bunch of cards, puts some like hand protection in play. And then turn two, you have a bunch of ways to go get your missing pieces. You can use angelic guidance or whatever, annunciation, star Bethlehem, activate the star ability of John at the top deck, a good gospel dominant and draw it. And then as far as getting to burial, we have Herod's treachery, which you can play it on a Herod to take an evil NT card from, from deck. That's pretty nice. There's not a lot of these cards out there. So finding one that actually works with a good defense is big. But I think in order to be con super consistent, if you really want to try to get this off on turn two, you're going to need the crowd's choice so you can go like attack with res revealer grab crowd's choice crowd's choice go to burial and you already have harvest time or whatever so like my concerns with this list is does it have enough offensive power to break through defenses because with, without glory with uh, of the lord and without woes that is going to lead to some situations that they're going to be able to block you where normally those cards are pretty much guaranteed to win you battles so you feel like Nativity needs something a little spicy here. So we're incorporating the Zacchaeus package. And so the Zacchaeus package is if it's turn two or later, you can either play Golgotha, go to your reserve, grab the Possessing Spirit. So this is a gospel character. So you can grab that guy then place him down. Assuming you have gospel unity, you can place him in your opponent's territory. And then you can just attack with Zacchaeus choosing a block or like do you Gabriel negate Possessing Spirit because it can ban if they have gospel unity. So negate that guy and then ban it. Zacchaeus choose them to block and, and what are they going to do if they're not playing orange, right? So that's like one way to do it. Or say it's you play this already down on turn one, what you can do is like you can activate New Covenant, go get Lost Child Found out of your deck and use it as a territory class, bounce Golgotha, bounce Claudius because he's, he's not gospel, so you need to bounce him. So you can like bounce your non-gospel stuff. So this deck is playing this guy's non-gospel and then this guy's non-gospel. So you bounce those. Now you have gospel unity. So when you play Golgotha down, you can go get Possessing Spirit. And now you can have access to that. So that's like one. That's like in place of a dominant, that's like a really strong, strong plan to do if you have access to your Zacchaeus. But it's like a lot of work, you know, in order to just do something a dominant could have easily done. And the other thing is we can use the New Covenant to also increase the power of our attacks. So New Covenant can go get good seed out of the reserve and this is a really nice backup plan or it can go get teaching and parables which is a really premium hand control card and so if you pair like new covenant activate go get teaching and parables you can play it on four living creatures or zacchaeus and hopefully that can like get you a free rescue or whatever but that that plan kind of falls down if opponent has like two good blocks or two good enhanced two two really effective battle winners that that plan doesn't always work but it's super effective early on in the game when both players aren't dealing with many resources so like that that plan's best on turn two i guess you're not getting to it on turn one and then i know mary requires unity gospel so everyone's gospel except for this guy this guy's cute because you can return him to your hand so the idea is before you attack with mary you you activate his ability return him to your hand and then attack with mary and then after after you're done with that during your discard pace you just put him down again so that's like a a sneaky way to have more hand protection in a Mary deck. I was wanting an excuse to play this guy and this seemed like the perfect deck for that because if you execute your burial in your harvest time, and you put all these lost souls at the bottom of your deck and the opponent manages to shuffle your deck or play a lost soul from a deck you they just spent two dominance worth of uh, work all for nothing and so that's why protecting your deck is going to be very key for that strategy so as i was just play testing it here's a couple of things i noticed without woes you're really going to be want to incorporate a way to negate their sense of hand protection 
because this deck relies on 20 shekels, like first sacrifice to get through. And so card like Herodias's daughter is going to be really nice, especially if you get to the point of the game where they're just attacking you with their heroes to get value and you have no souls out because you underdecked them all. Just having evil character you can push out there and block with and just generate some value and that's not going to give them initiative is, is nice. So if you're playing this strategy, I'd recommend either playing like Herodias's daughter or if you're doing the black version, do like Brood of Vipers or something get rid of their hand protection. So that's like one takeaway. Having woes is not having woes is like a pretty big deal. It's, it's a big deal to deal with their good cards, I should say. If you, dealing with their evil cards is not a big deal because you got Gabriel, you have Mary, you have Zacchaeus. You have, they're playing evil cards in their territory. You have ways to deal with those. It's But it's the good cards in territories that if you're playing Herods, they don't really have a lot of good ways to deal with that. And I'm not going to start playing beheaded or whatever. So, so yeah, overall the deck felt like it could consistently get burial harvest time off by turn two, turn three. And against some decks, that's very, it's like game over. I'll have the games I was doing play testing with, I'll have like three draws worth of, of turns where I know I'm not going to be drawing lost souls. And I have like multiple sources of hand protection, deck protection out. So I felt like, I felt like, okay, it felt pretty strong. And I was running the mirror match versus the, the nativity build that I'm currently running like the like the stock list or whatever you want to call it. And this deck was absolutely bodying it. And when it got into the position where it was doing burial plus harvest time, like the other nativity deck didn't really have an answer to that. The only the only way they were able to get through and actually like reset the deck is if I went like Lost Child Found, bounce your stable, bounce your storehouse, then Star Bethlehem, activate the star ability, like play a lost soul from your deck during battle. So if if this deck was able to pull that off, then this strategy becomes a lot less. Um, I played a game against like a, a Joshua deck and that, that also didn't, it, it, the first game didn't go well. He was able to just get an early start and he discarded all my protection. I was actually using the, the black version. So he discarded all my deck protection. I was able to get, and, and then, yeah, he had a card that let him protect lost souls from evil cards. So my blocks weren't good. We didn't use this version. What version did I use? It was like a nativity black one. I don't know if I have that list anymore. Anyways, but basically that, that game told me I feel like I needed a little bit. Wanted a defense that could actually block on turn one and could actually block if they're, if I needed to block. And then we played another game and I actually won. I'm, I put all the souls on the bottom of the deck and it bought me enough time to have my nativity offense just grind out his defense. Because if I'm attacking you with Mary every turn, there's... Eventually, you're going to run out of stuff. And the burial plan actually bought me a couple turns. Eventually, he was able to get Lost Souls out of my deck because of a card called Rahab. And he discarded all my hand protection and deck protection. But it was a great game. That was one of the best games of Redemption I played in a while. Mm -hmm. So yeah, another way you can increase the power of your nativity attacks is including the Colosseum. So because I can't play my glory, because I can't play my woes, they're going to be able to block me with Woman of Thieves. They're going to be able to block me with scattered effects more often. So if you're playing Colosseum, that, that can stop that. So Colosseum's not as good as having the Battle of Dominance, but it does help. And it does mean you have to tweak your defense because playing no straw and like contagious fear not the best idea in your coliseum deck right so you have to make a couple tweaks but this one if you're if you get hand knowledge you can if they have like a dominant to block you you can activate the cross or if they have scattered you can activate the cross and just push because you're not relying on battle dominance right now so like this felt like another strong way you could build the deck too but i don't know if it's stronger than the first version by playing coliseum you're also making your blocks weaker inadvertently because because no straw is a big deal and contagious fear is great so I, I could see this deck going that direction too all right and then i took this deck to the, the next extreme okay so i went back to the the hundred card version it's like okay well, let's go back to the drawing board okay what if you had 100 card version played because because what was a problem with the nativity herod's burial deck is that the, the lack of dominance <laughs> is really killing me not having three woes not having glory not having angel or just whatever that was brutal i don't know if you can build your deck like that and like you can go up to 57 63 64 cards and keep adding more dominance in like that's a fine way to do it but what if you went the 100 card route? Because you can still play your consistency pieces. So this one is a nativity gold silver offense. Playing basically most double of all the cards I can for nativity. And then it's playing some gold cards. You can get two watchful servants in play. And they band to each other and can draw six cards every turn. That seems pretty good. And they also have some really great ways to get dominance out of their deck. So turn one, you can go Angel of the Winds to Simon. Simon, activate new 
new covenant. New covenant, get amazing faith out of your deck. And then you have just got Simon plus amazing faith, which can go grab crowd's choice or your battle dom or, or harvest time or whatever. And then Bartimaeus is great because you can, he's like a really resilient guy. He can get teaching and parables back every turn. So if you go in teaching, attack with Bartimaeus, teaching, attack with Bartimaeus. Or you can go Jarius, ban to Jarius' daughter from reserve. Jarius' daughter tosses the next. It's like uh, negate other cards in battle, toss the next. Like pretty, pretty strong attack there too. So that's the gold splash. And then you got the silver. You can play two of these to draw cards from your gospel angels. And then you just have your nativity stuff. So turn one with this deck, you are trying to get to your resurrection. You have ways to do it. Or you're trying to get to turn one, just like a decent attack. Try to get the card draw ro rolling. You have some battle winners. You have ways to get silver cards out of your deck. <laughs> when you play Angelic Guidance, you're just, <laughs> it's a, when you're gold fishing this deck, you're just like, what do I do? I could, Angelic Guidance is really sweet because if you play it, you can go get the four living creatures, which is more deck protection. You can get Golgotha, which opens up your possessing spirit plan. And look at, we can play two stables, two storehouses. So we have so much protection. And the idea is we're not really playing that much defense. You see the ratio of offense to defense here is, is very much in favor of the offense. Because the idea is my defense, I don't need as much defense because all my souls will be at the bottom of my deck. And so on turn one, yeah, sure, we'll try to block. We'll try to block with Annis or this guy, but we know it's probably not going to work. So we're going to give them a soul. But on turn two, hopefully we'll have enough consistency in our deck to assemble the burial combo and deck protection. I don't know if this deck is actually consistent enough to do that on turn two. But the idea is we put all these on the bottom. Now we have a stacked deck of just gas. Now we have all the battle doms in the world to draw off the top of our deck. And so attacking, we're going to be attacking with this guy to draw cards, this guy to draw cards. We're going to be drawing our battle doms. An opponent can't attack us because our deck is, there's no lost souls out. Another side note about why this is kind of cool. A lot of the ways people do soul gen is lost souls and hopper. And if you're playing harvest time for everything, you're putting their lost soul and their hopper in play. And so the lost soul tokens will generate, but then after the lost soul tokens generate, you do. You do your burial and then you under deck all the tokens and the tokens go away. So unless they have a way to under deck their lost souls or like spawn more lost soul tokens out of nowhere, then that's going to be pretty effective against people's traditional soul generation methods. So it's a powerful strategy, but I don't know if it's like just a gimmick or, or if, an, if it can actually compete. So I'll definitely have to do some games to figure that out. I've done a couple so far, but here's a cool card. You can do Let Astray. You have to have Unity Meek Heroes. Typically when you're playing a deck, you don't really have room for this card, but in this deck it seems appropriate because I need 14 dominance. The 13 were pretty easy to choose, but the 14th was hard. But this is a nice find. If opponent does shuffle your deck and you're just kind of trying to buy some time before the game is over, you can catch people off guard with this card. So like Joshua decks, like they're not going to be attacking you with Meek, right? So you can just blow them out of the water, push them all back, say no, no, no. If people are just attacking you just to attack and you have no souls out, it is nice to try and generate some value on your end. So a nice way to do that is Queen Tafnis, who can block and then reveal their hand and discard like eight cards from their deck. So that's kind of cute, I guess. We got some more cuteness going. We have uh, no need for spices, so could either go in the reserve or the main deck. You don't really want to shuffle your main deck after you do your burial thing. So you try to avoid, avoid shuffling and searching. But let's say you have this out and you need to go to your reserve. You can go grab Nazareth out of your reserve with that no need for spices. The new covenant basically becomes a, new, a way to get to Nazareth. And so Nazareth is another way to protect your deck from being shuffled and searched through and stuff. The idea is once you have a have a steady attack with like a watchful servant or this guy, if you put a Nazareth in play, it's going to end up hurting your opponent more than you, hopefully. So that's that idea. And that's that deck. How, how good is this deck? I, I don't know. I don't have traditional ways of evaluating it. It can feel kind of clunky sometimes. Sometimes you're going to draw your Bartimaeuses, both of them, and both of your angelic guidances, and you're just going to regret your life for a little bit. But I think just testing will have to figure out if this is a viable strategy or not. But this was, I thought of these things in response to Tyler's video about asking deck builders to be a little bit more creative. And so here's, here's my attempt to, here's, here's what I'm thinking of. So I hope that inspires you to think a little bit outside of the box and look for unconventional ways of winning the game. Is that enough for now? Hope you enjoyed that little random deck deck. Bye.